what's up, Scrappy peeps? It's Adele from Inky Quill, and get ready for a green layout. Yes, that's right. I said it. Green. Very green. Now, I know this is aqua, but it does get green. It gets real green. Look at that. <gasps> lime green so all I did was I'm using my basil marshmallow cardstock which I absolutely freaking love and I added three dilutions colors I'm not sure what they are sorry but there there's not too many in the range so you can kind of work it out it's the bluey one the light green one and the acry one <laughs> so I'm just um, dabbing off some excess of that mist and I use that extra little bit in another layout later on oh here they are I'm showing you here there they are. Now, I don't know why, but every time I get basil marshmallow cardstock, it's wrapped up in plastic and, you know, it hasn't been touched, but it has these weird scrapey things on it. But I, I think it adds to the adds to the texture. So I really wanted to use the reason why I'm going green for this one is because I have a black and white photo and I really wanted to use that chipboard frame, which was offered older or maybe the gather. Maybe it was the gather one. Um, crepe paper chipboard sheet so I'm going to my background stamps now and just before I did add some water droplets which is a technique if you watch me regularly you've seen before um, and it just adds a little bit of extra something to the background I grabbed a scripty font stamp and I just did that and then this is a white chalk texture which um, I have a wedding hire business and do custom blackboards for brides and events and whenever chalk textures get to almost the end of their life, the, the nibs get really fuzzy and they go a bit grey because they've been writing on chalk for so long. I put them in my mixed media stash and I use them for white droplets. So that's how I get my white splatters. I know I haven't had luck with white mists. If you know any white mists, let me know because I want a really, really, really opaque one. So I'm just going through the Gather 6x6 paper pad just to see what I can do. And this is only a small photo. Um, I was for a little while contemplating making it small enough to fit in the frame, but I decided to use the frame as a an embellishment rather than a frame. So don't feel confined when you have frames in your stash. You don't have to use them as frames. You can use them as layering pieces or you can just use them as the base of an embellishment cluster. So I'm just adding some tape here and I'm just using a whole range of little cutoffs. So I really like keeping all of my little offcuts from the paper pad with the paper pad until there's barely anything left in the paper pad and then they'll go into my scraps box. I just find that it's easier to keep the collection together, especially in the six by six size. It's not too big and bulky. Um, and I find that sometimes I only just want a tiny bit of the pattern instead of having to cut into the, the larger sheet. So I'm adding a little doily and I think this is a four inch one. And I got these from my friend Amy. I bought some off her and they are really, really cute. I do like them a lot. I should mention also that I think this layout is an eight and a half by 11. Um, and if you're someone that, if you either do only 12 by 12 size and want to experiment with a smaller size but don't want to buy a whole heap of inserts, 8.5 by 11 is our like our A4 size here in Australia. So you can just use normal plastic page protectors that you would use in a folder. So that's a good way to, to give it a little bit of a try and see if you like the smaller size because it is quite different to have to work with a, a rectangle um, composition rather than a square. It took me a while to adjust, but now I don't think I can adjust back. <laughs> but I will make sure in my future classes, like I did with my um, Get Kitted online class, um, that I include both 12 by 12 and smaller sizes as well. I will still do that in upcoming classes. Don't worry. I might be converted for my own scrapbooking, but I'll still do the big ones just for you guys. So I'm just adding some chipboard pieces here from um, older October afternoon. I'm really trying to get through some half used sheets. So that's my challenge for you this week. Pull out three half used sticker sheets or embellishment sheets in your stash. Leave them on your desk. Don't put them away or put them in a little box or something pretty and see if you can use them up in the next month. See if you can do it. 
So I'm just adding my title here and I decide to call it Such Mates. Such Great Mates? Such Mates? I think I just call it Such Mates. When you say Such Mates over and over again, it makes no sense anymore. But they are. Dad and Nelly are just their best buds. <laughs> so I wanted to go with a black title just because the photo was black and white and there wasn't anything else dark on the layout apart from the little bit of the black outline on that frame. Um, so I think it's important when you're doing a layout to just have a little look at your photo and make sure that you're combining some of the colors of your photo in with your embellishments or your title or just a little little hint of something because then the photo merges in with the rest of the layout and it doesn't look so plonked on without going with the rest of the layout if that makes sense I, I hope it does it does make sense in my baby brain so I'm adding just a couple of little things to this frame just to jazz it up a little bit but I do end up leaving it open um, and I think I put some journaling or a title a little subtitle on top of the frame as well so I was really surprised that I liked this as much as I did a little bit of light green I think it's because I'm preparing <laughs> to be mother of a son and not a frilly little girl but I'm trying these things now you won't see this is my light green this this is light greened me out for a good six months so you probably won't see another light green thing for six months but I'm trying I'm trying and like last month I did the happy Halloween in orange um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just trying sometimes to step out of my comfort zone but I guarantee the next layout has turquoise and pink and gold all over it. <laughs> so I'm adding a few little hearts and things just to give it a little bit of tiny embellishing. And I get a lot of questions about my glue. Um, I use Scotch Tacky Glue and I pour it into a fine line bottle, which you buy empty. And I found that the yellow, I don't know if it's one of them's 18, one of them's 20 or 15 or they're different millimeters I'm not quite sure but I find that the yellow one is bigger and it's a lot easier to get the glue out than the blue one which I originally was using I really like the little tip of the fine line bottle too because especially with little things like this it makes it so much easier than having to, to deal with glue exploding everywhere <gasps> shake 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 your hearty shine shake your hearty shine how many of you like Heidi Shine? Let me know in the comments. Do you use Heidi Shine? If you're new to my channel, it's Heidi Swap Color Shine and I accidentally called it Heidi Shine once in a video and the name has just stuck and it's taken over. Um, I decide, do I go for a doodly border? No, I don't because that frame already had a bit of a doodly border. I love the word doodly border if you haven't noticed and I felt like I didn't really need, oh, hang on. No, we needed a doodly heart not a doodly border just to tie it in a little bit and there is a hint of pink on here just a tiny I had to put a little something on there but we're all done so this was a really fun layout to make and I will use that little background piece that I sopped off some of the mist with um, in another layout so stay tuned for that please give this video a thumbs up and comment if you like it because I will be reading all of these comments while I'm up late at night looking after baby Toomey and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Bye.